morning. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, why I chose Bulgaria. I know this video is way overdue, so it is time. Um, so why did I choose Bulgaria? It was a number of factors and I think initially I didn't actually know um, much about Bulgaria, but I ended up here because of a couple of synchronicities and coincidences, you know, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, initially I just heard about Bulgaria through a friend who was working with somebody who lived in Bulgaria and had nothing but good things to say about it, so of course that's rather interesting. And, um, and then since I was uh, planning to do van life, I thought, oh, it's probably a good idea to pass through Bulgaria and have a look at it. I spent about a year in Germany living there during lockdown and then uh, once that lifted, I got in my van and I did some van life all the way down to Bulgaria from Germany. I went through Poland and Slovakia and Hungary and Romania and it was wonderful. I had the best time. Uh, it took about five months to do that trip. Yeah, slow travel. <laughs> really fun. And uh, then I ended up in Bulgaria just in time for the cold to um, come in and that was just a little bit too cold so I rented an Airbnb just to take a break and it was a beautiful caravan Nirvana which was really fun and the cats were really happy to take a break too so that they could just walk around a little bit more freely and not on the leash because you know when I do van life I have them on the leash when we go for walks because I don't want them to run off or get spooked or chase something and then just get lost so that's not worth the risk to me um yeah so then i rented a place for a month in uh, nirvana in bulgaria and felt felt really nice just very relaxed you know it was a little village and i'm always comparing everything to germany to be honest because that was my most recent experience so coming to bulgaria and comparing that with all of the strictness of germany <laughs> you know in germany you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to do that and this is frowned upon and yeah, there's a lot of policing going about and not just actual police, but, you know, um, people around you will tell you off, even though they're not the police. Okay, I just walked past a really noisy dog. It's either me setting them off or Emma, or both of us. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was saying, like, it just felt a little bit more free and, like, people don't really mind what you're doing. They might be interested in what you're doing, like they're very curious. <laughs> That's what I've noticed about the local culture here. Like Bulgarians will stare at you. They want to know what are you doing, which is, is normal. I think it's normal. Like humans are curious. Not as curious as cats though. <laughs> but my point is like they might be curious, but they're not going to come up to you and say, don't do that, you know? Um, and if it looks like fun what you're doing, then they'll probably join it. <laughs> Yeah, or at least come and stare at whatever you're doing. So anyway, I think that's one of the main things that I noticed first, like, oh, this place just feels a little bit more accepting, which I really enjoy. And then the next thing that happened was uh, a little bit synchronistic, that I actually, in this little village where nobody spoke English, I actually met the only person that spoke English, and he happened to be a builder. <laughs> so that was a coincidence synchronicity, whatever you want to call it. Um, and basically we chatted about what I was looking for and I did say that I had a, a plan to buy in Bulgaria because I had looked it up and researched it online and done all the theory and so on. And so I did like the theoretical part of Bulgaria. Um, I just wanted to experience it. So yeah, he then suggested I check out the south of Bulgaria because um, I said, okay, I like meditation, I like alternative um, medicine and remedies. He said, well, check out the South, there's a good community down there. And then that's what I did. <laughs> I met really amazing people, so, so many, it's an amazing community here. And I think that's basically what sold it to me. Um, just feeling free and like just the country is just very accepting, you know, or the, the people in the country are very accepting of people being different and just being themselves really you can just feel that 
and then just meeting all of these wonderful people in the south of Bulgaria and they all they exist in the same area but it's not that's not suffocating like people can they go off and do their own thing and then sometimes they come together and meet up and that's a good support system but it's not overbearing in any sort of way so that's just perfect really a house just came up like just a really really good house with two thousand square meters of property um yeah, well, it's just it's just a perfect little house for me, you know, with a big garden, and that's really you know, the next point why I chose Bulgaria is because you can actually afford to buy a house here, and then you don't have to have a, a mortgage, you know, and that's a really big deal because um, paying rent, paying mortgage, it's a big pressure, and not having that in my life, it's such a big relief, and I can imagine that would be the same for everybody. Um, imagine you didn't have to pay rent or mortgage. <laughs> Basically, I'm in that situation. You can just buy a house for 10,000 lev. Yes, you'd have to renovate it, which would be another 10,000 lev or more. Actually, probably more. It depends how big your house is. It depends on the roof. The roof is a pretty big deal. Like, if the roof is not good, that's going to cost a lot to fix. Um, but what I managed to do was basically invest uh, 15,000 euros. That's euros, 15,000 euros. And I've got a house now that I don't need to pay mortgage or rent on. So... And it's a massive garden, you know, so I can go ahead and build my food forest, which is my plan. I want to plant some fruit trees and berries and so on. I'm going to have to change my hands. My arm hurts. <laughs> okay, so I'm using my other arm now. So it looks a little different. Um, right, so that, that is basically another deciding factor. Um, you just get such amazing space uh, for your money that's fantastic value and uh yeah i just feel incredibly lucky because my initial plan was actually to travel through bulgaria go to turkey spend the winter in turkey and then probably come back in spring to start looking for houses in bulgaria but yeah it's those those coincidences and synchronicities that came about just helped me find a house so quickly renovated really really quickly <laughs> i arrived in uh late october and I moved into my house by Easter. It's pretty incredible. So yeah, it's just quick decisions. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes when things just flow, then you, you can tell it feels right. Um, and then the other things I discovered, oh, so another deciding factor, like I briefly mentioned, was um, the community. I've always wanted to get to have um, a community around me, you know, have that support system and, just people actually talking to each other <laughs> because in Germany I only had a, one neighbor and he wasn't the most friendly neighbor so instead of having a really close neighbor who you don't really talk to and you have this big hedge in between the properties and you try and get some privacy instead of that you have a big property here where you have that privacy automatically because the property is big and, and then you actually go out and see people when you want to, when you feel like, oh, I'd like to go and see some people, be sociable. So that's exactly how it is here. And the other thing that is pretty great about Bulgaria is um, the utilities. They are really cheap. Uh, you can research this online, it's pretty great. So I mentioned in a previous video that the water only cost me 25 euros for half a year. Um, that's 50 lives. Well, for five months, so nearly half a year, which is pretty incredible. Um, electricity did increase in cost, but it's still not the same as Germany. I'm always comparing it to Germany because obviously that's my most recent experience. Um, so electricity up till now, I've only been paying about 25 lev a month, <laughs> which is extremely cheap. So I'm not exactly sure if they're actually reading the meter outside. There is a new meter installed, but I'm not sure if they are just taking the numbers from last year or if they're actually reading the meter, what I've actually used in the last month. They say they are reading it. So if I'm just paying 20 love per month for electricity, that's, that's insane. That's insanely cheap because that's 10 euros per month for electricity. That's, that is very little. <laughs> All right, so there's that for electricity and water. Uh, there's no gas here so if you want to have 
um, a gas cooker, which I do, you, you need to actually go and get a gas bottle. And um, once you have a gas bottle, you can just fill it up at a station. I use Harmanli, but there's also one in Lubomet, so they're all over the place. And you fill up your gas bottle and you have a gas cooker that works pretty good. Um, but I like having uh, half, well, it's not half, it's like one quarter is electricity and three quarters is uh, gas. Because I prefer cooking with gas. It lasts way longer, it's cheaper. Um, but sometimes you want to have the electric hub there just in case the gas bottle is empty. <laughs> so I think that's quite useful. Um, so yeah, that's it for utilities, I think. Um, if I miss the utility... Oh, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is pretty cheap too. <laughs> if I compare it to Germany and the UK, actually, it's insanely cheap. It's uh, 20 lev per month. And if you pay for six months, you get one free. So so cheap internet's really good i haven't had any problems with the internet there was one outage one outage and that lasted maybe i can't even remember now maybe a day i can't remember but i've already been here uh just about half a year and one day outage of wi-fi is okay i am okay with that um good so i think that's it for utilities now uh, if i've missed anything let me know all right other arm again. <laughs> My arms feel so jelly-like today. Um, and then the next reason why Bulgaria. The weather. The weather is amazing. The weather is just stunning. I think if you've watched a couple of my other videos, you'll see that I'm always a little bit enthusiastic about the clouds because they just look stunning. The sunsets are stunning. The sunrises are stunning. <laughs> the weather is just incredible here. I'm just, yeah, blown away every day. Just beautiful. But that does, of course, mean that the summers are incredibly hot. There were two weeks that were pretty, I would actually call it nearly unbearable. I was just a molten mess for about two weeks. And um, yeah, then, of course, the winters are very cold, but I think it's okay. You know, you've got your wood burner. I've just ordered wood and it's nice to have these changes in the seasons. And I should also mention that the winters are relatively short here. So the weather is still really good in November and even December sometimes. Like last December was really not that bad. It still felt like autumn. And, but it does last a little bit into April, I would say. So January, February would be the coldest. Um, March is still pretty chilly and then in April it starts lifting, but there are still a couple of cold snaps. <laughs> so you got to be careful with the frost if you have some seedlings that you plant out. So we are now in this Emma. <laughs> we are now in September and I am wearing a jacket because the mornings are actually a little bit chilly now and I am pretty cold sensitive. And that is why I'm going to spend a month in Turkey in winter. Probably somewhere in between January, February, I will be in Turkey. Um, but that's just me. <laughs> I'm very cold sensitive. And um, this is why I'm wearing a jacket in September. You won't see anybody else wearing a jacket, it's just me. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it about the weather. And why else did I move to Bulgaria? What else do I enjoy about this place? I like that there's fruit trees everywhere. This will be different between um, the rural areas and the cities, of course. So I guess I should probably talk about that separately. Okay, another good thing about Bulgaria, why I chose Bulgaria, is because it's part of the EU. Being part of the EU, of course, it makes it easy for me to get residency here, buy a house here, and live here. Because I've got a German passport, so yeah. Um, of course, it is possible to move here if you are not part of the EU, but it just is a little bit more challenging, a couple more hoops to jump through. Um, but for me, I guess I'm just lucky that uh, I've got a German passport and of course all I had to do was just go and apply for residency and yeah mm, no hoops to jump through luckily uh, the process took about two weeks to get residency because I had to go there fill out some forms and go back and take a picture and then go back take some fingerprints and then go back and pick it up so it was a bit of a back and forth but really not difficult um, and of course I had to have uh, health insurance, which I had, and um, yeah, pretty easy. It's part of the EU, and uh, yeah, it's nice to not have uh, so many restrictions with borders and such. 
Temperatures might, might not be the same for everybody, but it actually feels really safe here to me. Um, of course, there is a little bit of crime where people just see the opportunity to take things here and there, but it's not nothing like South Africa. And uh, I'm actually originally from South Africa. I grew up there for 18 years and um, the crime there is pretty intense. So you really have to be hyper vigilant all the time. And comparing that to rural Bulgaria, it's like night and day. Here you really don't have to worry too much um, at all. You, you probably do want to lock your house, <laughs> you know, do the basic things. Um, but it's really night and day from South Africa where people have electric fences and guarded communities with actual guards with guns. So yeah. You can't really compare the two places. Um, in Germany, of course, it feels pretty safe as well, but um, they've also got crime, you know? There's there's small crimes everywhere. Opportunists, that's just, unfortunately, the fact of life, I suppose. Um, and that is here as well in Bulgaria. But compared to South Africa, where I grew up, this is so safe. It feels really just wonderful. I can walk around at night, and I do. I walk around at night and I feel very safe. Um, but then again, I do have Emma with me. <laughs> She's always coming with me for walks. She loves walks. Um, so there's that. <laughs> but she's definitely not really a, an aggressive dog or anything. She's just big. And I guess she does, she does bark. And I guess she is aggressive sometimes when she does feel like, oh, there's something wrong here or she's unfamiliar with something. She will, you know, be a little bit more aggressive. Oh, here's my left. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. The button should be there, there, somewhere over here. <laughs>